gonna pass me for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, I'm not gonna talk too long because you don't want this to be. We have been so lucky at that academy. I think this is the fifth and probably the most famous author we've ever had visit the school. Okay, I, first time I met an author was when I was over here, so we were so lucky. Now I've forgotten, can you remember the lady's name? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I have to first of all teach you a very important strategy of reading. Just being in the last So they're very helpful to people who 
line. I also get to go in really cool places where people dogs can't go, so they can even go on airplanes, they can go in restaurants and things. All right, now, to go to Antarctica, there are no hospitals. You have to be really fit and really healthy. So when I was going to Antarctica, the first thing that happened was I had to have a medical test to make sure I was really fit and really healthy. And I had to have my brain waves mapped. And that was to make sure I didn't have epilepsy. So I felt like a bit of an idiot because I had to wear that white cap. The cap wasn't too bad, but there were all these wires stuck to my head underneath the cap. And then all the wires came down and went into this little bag. I had to wear it for two days. I felt like a bit of a twig. But anyway, my brain waves were okay and I was cleared to go to Antarctica. Now, can anyone guess how long it might take to go from Australia to Antarctica by ship? Yes. You. How long? 15 hours. I'm going to take another guess from over here. Yes, the little boy in the back row. Nine days. Is that what you said? All right, I'm going to take another couple of guesses from over here. That person who's right up there. Yes, 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 yes. Seven days. All right, last guess. Two days. Two weeks. Two weeks on the ship. And can you see how rough that is? Maybe we could turn the lights down a little bit so the slides are a bit brighter. Is that possible? Sweet. We turn the stage light down a little bit so the slides are a bit brighter. So that is the ship crashing over a wave. It's really rough. If you get seasick, it's a bit miserable. It goes on for a long time. But guess what? Halfway through the voyage, you get into the ice, and then the ship stops crashing around. That's a bit better, isn't it? You can see the slides. And you start to see all the really cool animals of Antarctica. Now, does anyone know what that bird is? I'm only going to take one guess. No, it's not. Right, so I want you to stand up on the end. Could you stand up? Yep, both of you. Keep going, keep going, or will you stand up? I want 12 people standing up. Who can help me here? That's probably about right. I think you two sit down. This is a wandering albatross in the picture, and when it spreads its wings, it is as long as that line of is. Isn't that incredible? It is the biggest wingspan any bird in the whole world. You probably would have to stand a little bit closer together, but you get the idea. You can sit down now. Isn't that amazing? And they can fly behind boats. So when I saw this bird flying behind the boats, it was just the most incredible thing. Has anybody here seen the movie Happy Feet? Yes. Yeah, so you know some of the other creatures that you've seen in Antarctica. Does anyone know what that is? Up in the back right there, yes. Yes, you do. It's a whale, that's why it's a humpback whale. So there are a lot of whales in Antarctica. And they're happy to be big whales. But I'm going to tell you something you probably didn't know. They got it all wrong in that movie. Why do you think that was? Emperor penguins are boring. They come up to you, right? They come like this. They waddle up to you. They're so big, by the way. They stand about that high. You cannot believe how big they are. And they come up to you. It's boring, isn't it? They just do that. They just stand there. They have no exciting thing. Occasionally they make a bit of a noise. These are the penguins that should have been the stars of that. They are fantastic. They are little and only penguins. They're only about this And they are the funniest guys in Antarctica. They are like the clowns of Antarctica. They are really cool. But you know something else about a penguin that I didn't know? Did anyone ever see a dirty penguin in Happy Feet? I don't remember seeing a dirty penguin. Have you ever seen a dirty penguin on those wildlife documentaries? Yeah. Oh, well, look at this dirty penguin. Oh. I had no idea penguins got so dirty. So, and don't the penguins nest in mud and rocks, and so often they look like that until they have a swim and clean off. When we're on the shore, people want to tell me what this is. Yes. Yeah. It's called a, actually called a crab eater seal. And there's a few different seals. And what was amazing was we were through the ice on the big ship. You'll see a picture of the ship in a moment. And that seal was fast asleep on the ice. And for some reason, it didn't wake up until the ship was right next to it. You can see the look of surprise on its face. It didn't even have time to run away or hobble away. It just went, Aah! I can't 
case. I've only got to Antarctica and start seeing huge icebergs. You know, the little black dots are? Yeah. Penguins. So you can get an idea of how big those icebergs are. And that's the ship. It's crunch, 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 crunch all the way through the ice and it's ready to offload all the cargo. That's all the people walking in. You know what they're walking on? Actually, yeah, it's the frozen sea. They are walking on the frozen sea. If we came in six weeks later, that would all be ocean. But because it was still close to winter, you've got your hand up and you see the very thing. What is it? I know, it's amazing, isn't it? You can see that there's that enormous earth moving machine on it. Well, the ice is about that thick, about three metres thick. So that's how come. And as the, the season goes on and it starts melting, they have to drill holes to check that it's going to be strong enough. Right. Now this was the first person I met when I got off the boat. And in Antarctica people have funny nicknames. Does anyone want to have a guess? So I'm only going to take two guesses of what his nickname was. Have you already had a term? Yes. Beauty. Beauty. You were really close actually. One more guess. Somebody over here. Who had a hand up? Yes. Yes. Did you get your hand up before you actually had an idea? happens to me all the time too. You get the hand up and All right, I'm going to tell you what his name was. It was Dr. Fluffy. You can see why, can't you? Dr. Fluffy. So he was a pretty funny guy. He looked like that because there's a tradition in Antarctica of letting your beard grow for the whole of winter. And then when you go back, you shave it off. So I met Dr. Fluffy and he was taking me out on this amazing trip, researching my book. Remember my boring old grown-up book. We were going in that thing called the Hayflakes, like a big red tractor. Now this is when I met the dog that was to change the course of my life, I think. I'm starting off being a children's writer, but you can see it's not a real dog, can't you? So this dog is called Stale, and she is a collection dog. Yeah, you're holding up the book. So what that means is, so Stale is a life-size Labrador, she's that big, and made of fiberglass, and she's got a hole in her head to raise money for guidebooks. So remember I said at the beginning that the Australians, you asked him to ask a question, what did he take these pictures? Yes, I did take these pictures. I think the only picture I did take was that one of Byron. But I'm not going to take more questions because I can just see now all the hands down for a minute. If you have a question that's desperate, sort of wave at me. We'll see how we go. Okay, so this is the dog that people kidnapped when the Huskies came out of Antarctica. They were determined they were going to have a dog down there as their friend, and all they could have was a fiberglass dog. Now, it was kind of a funny story because they kidnapped her from Hobart, which is right down in Australia. They smuggled her onto that big ship, and they took her to Antarctica. And, you know, really, that shouldn't be the end of the story. You know? They probably were planning to take her back a year later. But in fact, she ended up being there for 20 years. So it was a pretty amazing story. So she came out on all our adventures. So every time we climbed a mountain, Stady came up the mountain with us. And what I started to learn was all the stories about Stady. For 20 years she'd been in Antarctica. So she's been in helicopters, she's been on boats, she's been hidden away, she's been smuggled, in fact, all over the world. She actually was in Paris last year. Someone had a photo of her with the Eiffel Tower. She's on a thing called a skidoo there that takes you over the snow. So I kind of had the idea that Stane wanted me to tell her story. And although I'd never written a book with kids, I thought, I'm going to give that a go. Anyway, I think that I sort of channeled Stane because I had such fun writing that story. And it was like she really wanted her tale to be told. But what happened was, you know, I'm, I'm a professional author, so I went to my publisher and said, I've got this idea for a book. And they said, well, that's great. Do you have any other ideas? Now this is where Dubai comes in. So, this was, I think about four years ago now, this story about Dubai was in an Australian newspaper. You can see it had a great big colour photo, it was a really great story. And it was a tale about how these wild horses from Australia were captured came to Dubai to be endurance race horses. You look like you are dying to like that. Ooh, I'm not going to answer that question just yet, because that's in the book. Okay, one more question just for now. What's his name? Gosh, 
Is that the sign was in English? Oh. Well, I thought there might be somebody here who knew these horses. So this was an amazing story, and I had cut this out of the newspaper, and I had put it in my special ideas file, which every author has to have, where that's a great idea, one day I'm going to write a book about that. So I said to my publisher, of course I have another idea, and I can this out. All right. I think we're having hands down for the moment. I'll, what I'll do is I'll take questions about the horse at the end of these slides and then I'll go on and talk about my third book. Now, there were two things that I had to do to find out about this story. It was such an amazing story. The first thing was I had to go out into the Australian desert and find out about the wild horses there. Now, can everybody see that? It's way, way, way out in the desert where these horses live. Very, very remote place. Hardly anybody lives there. There's an Aboriginal community there, but not very many other people. It's hard to get there. It took me a very long time in a special four-wheel drive. See that? We had to take extra petrol, we had to take camping gear, we had to take water. One big question. No, this is Australia. Did you know Australia has lots of deserts? Yeah. I'll go back again. There's deserts right through the middle of Australia that sort of start around here, yeah, a lot of that is desert and go right there. So a big chunk of Australia is desert. And I'll tell you something else you may not know. Australia has more wild camels than any other country in the world. So that desert is full of camels. Isn't that amazing? Nice? All right. I was really, really excited when I saw my first wild horse. And we going there. Good. And you can see the horse standing there in the trees in the background. It's amazing because I got up really early and I crept out to see the horse there it was. Has anybody ever seen a wild horse? A lot of you. Are there wild horses in your bar, aren't there? Okay, hands down then. They are beautiful creatures. Look at that. Look how gorgeous they are. I wanted to take all of these horses home with me. Wow, and yes, whoever was asking before I took these photos as well. Now, that was only half of the story. The other half of the story was that I had to come here, to come all the way to Dubai, because I knew that the horses were in a stable in Dubai. Okay, and I knew the name of the stable was. It's a bit of murmuring, if there's a desperate question, or we're just getting a bit restless. I can't see any hands up right. I'll, I will take horse questions in a minute. So I came all the way to Dubai. Now, here's a funny thing. One of my good friends in Byron Bay, her daughter lived in Dubai. So that was really handy. I had a friend to stay with. One of my other friends in Byron Bay, his niece, worked at the stables. Now, how is that for a small world? I really was quite amazed by that. So I came to Dubai, stayed with my friend, and I managed to go out to the stables to see these horses. Now you wouldn't know it, but that horse is one of the wild horses from Australia. It doesn't look like it, does it? Now it looks like a beautiful endurance race horse. But that horse grew up until it was about four years old in the wild desert of Australia, having never had a human being touch it before. That's an incredible story. And now it's living in these amazing stables in Dubai, learning how to be an endurance race horse. This is another, also from there. And really, I, it was really amazing because I had only been out in the desert in Australia not long before I came to Dubai. So I sort of felt like I wanted to say, I've just seen your cousin. And they said to tell you, it's all really good out there and they're having a great time. It's fantastic. So that's what made me like this one. Yes, that's right. So, so then I have questions about the horses because I think I'll answer them now rather than say them to the end. I can see a hand up over here. What a great question. What does Parafu mean? Parafu is the Aboriginal name of the lake where these horses live. So it's an Aboriginal word. And in fact, the other horses, I'll just go back. That horse is called, let me just make sure I've got it right. I think it is called Jani. And Jani means grey egret. Do you have egrets in Dubai? They're a sort of bird like a heron. So that, that's the Aboriginal name for the grey heron. And that one was called Tamana. And I think that was another animal name. I can't remember exactly where it is at the moment. Oh, jumping ahead. 
Alright, all four questions, yes. Um, are they at the moment, are they racing or are they still being trained? <laughs> Great question, are they racing or are they still being trained? Well, when I went to see them a couple of years ago, they were mostly still in training. I think one or two of them have been in races, so I'm expecting that some more of them have been in races, and I'm hoping I can find that out while I'm here on this trip. But you know something really interesting that they said about them? They said, I, I spoke to a, a girl who was one of the riders, and she said, I love those horses. I love the Australian wild horses. She said, you always know that they will wild. And the reason you always know that is they're always listening. So other horses, when they're having a little rest or something, they'll just sort of let their heads drop and they'll drink. But the wild horses, they always have one ear alert. Okay, uh, yes, yes. Which horse do I think will win? Fastest. Well, you know, endurance racing is a bit different to normal racing. So for endurance racing, the horse does have to be fast, but it has to be very fit. You can't just make the horse run until it drops. So I'm not very good at picking horse races, I'm afraid. I don't think I can tell you that. <coughs> do you mean in Australia or do you both? You know, there was hundreds of horses out there. It was really amazing. So across that desert area, there were hundreds of wild horses. Just in front of it. Did I ride the horse before? Well, I didn't get to ride any of the Australian horses, but I did get to ride another horse when I was visiting the stables. But you know what? My friend who came with me, she was a pretty good rider. And so the stable person said, yeah, you two can have a go on these horses. And they put us on two horses, and her horse took off. And it just bolted all around the ring, and I was so glad that was happening. Yes? Do I have a horse? No, I don't. But you know, when I was a kid, I really wanted a horse. And I, it wasn't until I was grown up that I finally got one, but I don't have one now. All right, I'm going to take a few more questions here and then come back to this side. So, yes. Have the in a big voice. Still can't hear that. Can you repeat that Rachel be the main character, because you've always got to have a good main character in this 
and Rachel goes with her dad to catch the horses. So it's about a group of 12 horses, but Haraku is the main horse. Also in the back row, yes? Yes. Big boys? I still can't hear you. So this thing is so big that way, I can only hear my own voice, which is terrible. No, I don't play video games. Unless there was a horse video game, then I might play that. Alright, yes, to the blue top thing. How did I feel when I came to Dubai? Wow, it felt kind of strange and then exciting. It's not like anywhere in Australia, so I feel like I walk around like that with my eyes really wide. It's a pretty amazing place, isn't it? And it's, it's a very unusual place. There's not many places in the world like Dubai. So I felt amazed and like, wow, I wonder what it's really like to live what is my favourite animal? I find that very hard to answer, except I love cheetahs. I really like cheetahs and I like horses. All right, I'm going to take a few more questions in this middle bit and then I'm going to come over to you guys. Yes. Say that again. Why did I want to write books? Well, sometimes I think if you want to write a book, maybe you're born wanting to write a book. It might be like, does anyone here want to be a vet? Just hands down the questions for a second. Is there anyone here who really wants to be a vet? So there's quite a few of you. So when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a vet. And it was, I suppose it just felt like that's the thing I really want to do. Then right at the last minute, I changed my mind. Just when I got old enough to go to you. But now I write stories about it. So it's a little bit like being a vet. So I think that's a, you know, you're kind of figuring out what it is you want to do, what you love doing. And really, probably the main thing is I love reading. I absolutely love reading. There are so many hands here. How am I going to pick? I'm going to go for the back row at the end, yes? What's your favourite book when I was a child? Well, I read a lot of horse books, but I did love an English author called Edith Blyton. She wrote a series called The Famous Five. Has anybody heard of that series? Yes. Yeah. So I love those books. In the very back row, just behind you. Yep. Yes, you. Did I ever find it difficult? Yes. Yes. Sometimes I say to friends, the only thing you need to be a good writer is a great big pot of bottle of glue, and that's so that you can glue your bottle to the chair and not get up until you're finished. So you know how hard it is just to write a story for school. It is sometimes it's really hard to write. Sometimes you really want to do something else. Okie okay, doke. Who in the middle there? Yes, you. Alright, let have to say it now. My idol author. Is that the question? I think it was Edith Barton. But there was also a, a author called James Kerry who wrote about being a vet and I loved him as well. Two more questions from this section. I'm going to come down the front now. Yes, you. About falconies. Oh, that's a great idea. I would love to write a book about a falcon, actually. I think it's beautiful. I might have to come and get some research help. Last question in this section, up the back in the pit. What inspired me? Because I love reading so much and I wanted to write books that kids would really love to read. Right, I'm coming over here because I don't want you guys to feel like I'm ignoring you. In the front row, yes. Um, when you went to Dubai before, which was your favourite horse you saw? You know, I think that beautiful grey one actually. Let's go back a little bit. That one. I love that. Yeah. Yes. How many times did you go to the stables? How many times did I go to the stables? I only had a really short trip, so I had to really ask every question I could think of. Yes? Have you seen in the Burj Khalifa? No, I haven't. And you know what? I had a choice because I had a special program of authors on this festival, and I had a choice between going up the Burj Khalifa or going to see another stable. I'm going to see the stable. One more question, yes? Why did you think of making this book? Why did I think of making this book? It's because it was such great story. I thought it was an amazing story about these wild horses that travelled right across the world. And one more thing about these horses, <laughs> they had Arabian bloodlines. 
so they were part Arab forces, so it was sort of like they were coming back home for them to come here. So that's why I wanted to tell the story. All right, hands down, there's more time at the end, I'll take some more questions, but I have to tell you about koalas. All right, now aren't they huge? I can see someone holding up next to the koala at the back. They are the cutest things ever. But now here's what I want to, here's what I want to ask. Does anyone know what the noise a koala makes? I'm only going to ask two people. Do you have your hands straight up? Yes. Do it loud. Okay, one more here, so I'm going to take yes. Wow. They're mostly But you know, I had a friend, right, and she stopped her car because there was a koala on the road, and when she got out, the koala ran up her. She got very badly scratched. But one more guess about the koala noise. I'm probably only going to be able to take maybe two questions from each section. 
Alright, so not if, if you've asked me a question before, put your hand down. I only want people that haven't asked before. Okay, yes, you. Yep. Yes. Was I scared? Um, well, it didn't feel like it, so I was a little bit scared for that. But their food is okay, it's just like the Um, Look, it's a koala that's used to sitting on food, so no, I wasn't too scared. But, you know, you can have their claws are very, very sharp. Yes. You know what, I have a lot of snakes in my home and I wish I could pick them up in a beautiful place and I really wanted to pick them up and cover them. There was nothing wrong with it, so I had to leave them there. Right, one more question, Doc. Hands down if you've asked me something before. Hands from one of those big pets. That was your answer. Yeah, no. That's a really good question. In Australia, there are laws saying that you can't keep native wildlife as pets. So that because they're protected. I don't know if I agree with that more. I think maybe in some ways it would be good for people to have this. Okay, great question. Put your hands down this section. You have been very good. Okay, I'm going to take three from here. I'm going to take the little boy in the back row there. Yes, you. Alright, did you think you would that? I've written three books for kids and I've written three books for grown -ups. I've written six books all together. I'm working on another one now. All right, yes? Have I hugged and touched all the animals in the books? I've touched the horses, I've touched the guava, and I have hugged the steak. So I worry that it hurt me. Uh, well, I didn't touch any of the really wild ones. So no, I was felt pretty safe. All right, hands down if I've already taken a question. I know I've already had questions from you guys. Yes. You said that you were walking from the woods, then it happened. Well, it hasn't got a name yet, but I've already put a book about an albino humpback whale. Do you reckon you would read that? Nice. The other thing is I thought it might be nice to write another book about Paracruz Adventures in Dubai. If I do that, I will have to come back and get help from you guys. Right, one more question from here, yes? When did you start writing books? I started writing books when I was 10 years old. But I wasn't very serious about it then. I wrote a bit of a book when I was 10. It was a bit silly, but you know what? If you want to start writing a book, you have to write really silly stuff and that's how you get better. So you have to be prepared to write some silly books and eventually you learn how to write books. Hands down, middle section, you have been very good. Okay, last three questions. Yes, in the pink. Yep. Why did you want to write books about animals? Well, I, the question was why did I want to write books about animals? I think it was because I loved animals and I wanted to be a vet and I didn't end up becoming a vet. So it was sort of a way of still loving animals.